Hey folks, Whip here, and welcome to Hardcore Minecraft. Today, I'm solving a huge problem in my world. I have so many fields, but no copper field to call David. So I am building a massive copper factory to avoid any future messes of copper everywhere. And well, I did get a little distracted expanding the city, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get rocking. Ow. I want out, please. I don't, okay, video start now. With the industrial district build from the last episode, I created this canal, except it's a bit too small. To make it really show up once all the buildings are in place, I want to first redirect the upper section to allow for even more building space, and then expand it by another two or three blocks to let the water have more of a presence in the build. Next up, I just need to extend these walls back here where we're bringing the river back in. And the pig died. Oh no. On top of that, I do want to change out the entire bottom of the canal here away from the stone and into some dirt. And this is looking pretty good now. Next up, we need to fix the retaining wall. First, we can start with a little bit of stone and then throw some polished andesite on top. We're right here to fix the little overhang I'd created last time. We can just throw that in. Probably be easiest just to start out with a ton of stone laid out here. Maybe making a little bit of what we did on the harbor wall, I want to include a little bit of stone brick, mossy stone bricks, and then we'll work in our mossy cobblestone, cobblestone, and a tiny bit of moss. I absolutely hate building while floating in the water since it puts me in the swimming animation constantly but you know it was worth it for the canal it looks so much better now one more swim through this entire place as i first need to add in i'm swimming again i need to add in a lot of kelp which we can create little bunches of and i need to make sure it's not under the flowing water and in between we can add in a ton of seagrass now that's looking much better next thing i need to fix up is well the clay farm is uh floating since we are talking about it let's fill this up one more time how did this all break I haven't done anything. Oh no, I'm breaking even more. Oh gosh, chicken, don't look at me like that. I have to drink all these bottles of water. I would be so hydrated. You could help. You could help chicken. We can just put those back in there. And now please, why aren't you working? Ignore the fact that most of that's clay already, but I think I've fixed it. Yes, it is working. Look at that chicken. Look at that, we're making mud. You just, you just pushed me out of the way from making, ah, chicken. Right, much better. Oh, that was a, that was a headache. And we fixed it because I'm a very hydrated professional. Right, back to focusing on the cliff and no more distractions. I'm gonna need light gray concrete powder, light gray wool, which I'm almost out of. A quick round visiting all the sheepies. That's at least a little better. Next, some acacia logs, more stone and tough blocks quick trip into the mines to grab a few extra tough blocks we found diamonds now for the cliff building i'm trying to use the acacia and tough as darker colors than the light grays as highlights to add in some extra depth to our stone cliff first corner is now completed and i like it a lot so let's get rocking and complete the rest of the cliff around the corner where i'm really glad i took the time to do this right instead of just slapping some stone on and moving on now this stone over here is for an eventual build i thought adding in some sort of cold storage could help add a city element into the natural landscape and now we definitely have space for a new building back here which is going to be fantastic before i get too carried away with the previous build it's time to focus on the copper factory which is going to need some land to sit on so i've got to get the rest of these spruce trees out of the way oh bleh. sad no minecrafter likes an accidental strippage oh quickly running up to the lumber mill to drop off all of these sprucey logs and next down to the harbor to load up on a bunch of grass blocks as it's time to do a little terraforming and level out this entire space where yes you can all rejoice i am going to be trying to double dirt this as much as i can starting by outlining the road to give it a bit more substance as i need to go up from here next i want to pick a few points like this one and extend the grass blocks out to the far side with something like that this is for a factory that needs a larger flatter space so i'm not adding in anything too crazy here i might have made a mistake i made a mistake i made a mistake all right this little section here is now filled in okay let's tackle this and make a few torches no 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 my dirt i just put it there everything's fine 
put lights down, the bad things will go away. I'm gonna be smart and light up this whole section I'm planning on building over right now. Uh, yeah, that's probably good to do. That should make things a lot safer down here. Yeah, no, no damage at all. Except this stupid guy. I really just needed a way back up. I don't have my elytra on. And I fell back down. Take two. No, 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 take three, take three. First try. Yeah. Just like absolutely nothing happened, I finished leveling off the train. And now for the fun part. This definitely isn't large enough for the factory. We've got a good amount of depth, but I wanna send it farther over here. I plan to build an interior for this, so we need a lot of extra space to work with. And I think that's gonna mean bringing the cliff all the way back. If we don't use the space, I'll just do some terraforming like we did over there and it'll be totally fine. But this will help connect us all the way over into the gate, which is gonna be really cool. If I just level off this top section, we should be able to get a good idea of how much more space we're creating here. That definitely, <laughs> that's a lot more space. Okay, hopefully this works. Step one, we build the beacon for some haste too. Getting right into it, I worked from the top of the hill going down to level it out as much as I can for the future factory location. There goes almost all of the dirt and that is one very dead shovel. And just like that, the stone is now also gone. But most importantly, I've now placed over 100,000 dirt in this hardcore world. Okay, but for real, I really need to repair these tools. It's kind of stressing me out, which means it's time for a stop at the Wither Skelly Farm. Nope, I saw you. You're not blowing up my farm today. Nailed it. With everything fixed up, it's time to plant a field. Today, we're doing something a little different. I wanna plant a field of Azure Bluets, which first is going to require transforming the soil into some coarse dirt so it doesn't have the grass sitting under the flowers. Surrounding the plot of land with some oak leaves, asking you to subscribe. Wait, no, 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 that comes next. Uh, planting all of the flowers in, and now be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Back over pretty close to world spawn now, and this is looking really good. Back over to the build today, I wanna finish off the canal with a water mill right back here. Grabbing a ton of materials for this, I want to add in some fun new colors into the area as if this structure is a lot older than the industrial district itself, revolving mostly around wooden blocks for the build. The jungle logs, I do want to go ahead and strip them down and use this all for the roof. I've recently realized that I'm pretty much only using stripped logs now, and I never really even build out of the unstripped logs. I just love how much cleaner these things look. For one final pop of color, let's grab a little terracotta here and craft some yellow terracotta. Okay, let's start with a little bit of brick here along the water's edge, coming up probably four blocks, and then we can use a little dripstone for some texturing. I wanna have the building jut out back along to this side. Before we get to that though, I wanna have the next floor jutting out here with some stripped dark oak logs and trap doors in between. Bringing those up the sides. Then for the wall itself, let's use some smooth sandstone, which looks pretty good. Then right out here, let's extend a small balcony out with some spruce slabs, surrounding it with our acacia trap doors. Look at the cute little balcony over the canal. Now on top of this sandstone here, I wanna add in my typical divider, and then we're gonna bring in the yellow terracotta for that fun pop of color. Working up with the roof line, I'm thinking we can use our dark oak fence gates and open all of them. But right here, we can do a little window. Test site is figured out, so I ran around filling out the rest of the walls up to the roof, which we do now need to raise. And this is gonna be done with jungle planks along the bottom edge, working into strip jungle logs and strip jungle wood. To make this appear a little bit more reinforced, I'm thinking we take a bit of spruce along the outsides as if it's like holding this roof down. And I think that's looking pretty good, except for this random gap. Here, I want to add in a small little spruce shed for a small space for the person who might own the mill to live inside, which needs to probably be about that size. Then to keep things simple, let's just use a little bit of jungle slab action. Now for the most important detail of the building, otherwise it's just a house. I extended a log across the canal to create the water wheel. Grass doesn't work too well out here for the road in front, but something like this works great to contrast against the building. There are two ways to get copper in Minecraft. Number one is to mine it out of the ground, and number two is to kill a drowned zombie, which is actually most easily done in the end dimension. So realistically, I can't build a factory to produce copper over here in the city, but, 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 
it, but I can build a factory that ages copper for building. So let's get a ton of empty shulker boxes as I've got to do a lot of digging. My goal is going to be to age four stacks of copper blocks at once, and each block needs to be a minimum of four blocks away from every other copper block. I am definitely going to need a beacon to set this up. Okay, so each row needs to be this long. Now I just need to dig this line all the way down here for the same length. Using the crimson planks as a guideline of where I'm going to be placing all of the copper blocks on top of, it's really easy to actually block this entire thing out. Two of the outside lines are in place, so the first big dig is underway to clear out the entire top layer. First layer is now dug out and the copper blocks would sit right here, but I want to try something. Making a quick trip into the nether as I'm going to need to get a few frog lights and I'm here. Ochre should be okay. And back we go. Mob spawning is definitely going to be a problem down here if I'm not careful. So I actually want to replace all the planks that we just put in with our frog lights. Now, I know adding in a copper block is going to cover the light source, but that's okay for now. With our copper block sitting right there, we need to come down one, two, three, four blocks, and the next will sit right here, meaning a frog light will go under that, which means it's time to tear down another three blocks in the hole. I have some raw copper that's ready to be smelted down. Ow. Out, which we can toss into the super smelter. And while that stuff all smelts down, I want to run over to the librarians and trade for a ton of glass. In between each layer going down, I want to add in a floor of glass so I can easily tell what is or isn't aged. And I'm out of glass. This is going to require a lot of materials. With that, the glass floor is now in place, and I've got two stacks of copper we can load into the system. And there we go, just about halfway done. With that ready to go, I went into my deep, not so dark pit of a copper aging box and finished digging down the entire space. Super dead pickaxe later. We can now add in the bottom two stacks of blocks of copper and a lot of the top ones have already aged down. Except I do wanna allow for more easy future expansion of this thing if we do need it. So I've gotta dig this all down another block. Ah! Ah, of course this is a slime chunk. The little ones can live. With that dug all the way down now, we can grab a bunch of glass and fill it all back in. The floor is now entirely shrink-wrapped, and I can go... That's stone. That's copper. I can go around and add in all of the last bits of copper to age down. There we go. Four stacks of copper all aging down pretty slowly. I mean, no, this definitely didn't take me and my little slime friends like an hour to dig the entire hole that the top section is almost all aged down. No, 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 no. We just hanging out for a few minutes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. First step here, I want to create a staircase that's going to take me from the bottom level up to the top level. And I think a three wide walkway should be pretty perfect for that. And I went too high. I do love when the math mass going from the outside edge perfectly into the middle. To keep it simple, let's just throw in stone brick stairs for a easy way to walk up. This is intended to be just super functional for now, but I can at least clean up the edges so we're only seeing stone, which kind of helps a bit. Now, if we bring ourselves back this way a little bit farther, I got a little lost in here. So after thinking about it for a while, I decided to just create a looping staircase up to the top for an easy way to walk in and out of the copper box. Looks like we have broken a above ground underground so we're getting close to the top which i think it means it's time to actually refocus on building the factory before i get out of here let's be sure to gather up the beacon and seal this in like we were never here just don't think about the giant secret hole we have underground now i forgot this stupid stone like we were never there. Well, all that copper ages down, I need a ton of materials to create this factory. First off, running over to the dark oak forest to strip down a ton of logs. And a good while later, I now have all of the wood materials we're gonna need out of the lumber mill. Next, dropping down into the quarry, I have an empty box that I need to fill with rocks. As I want basalt, bricks, granite, 
follow standesite follow standesite stairs as well as a ton of deep slate materials unfortunately out of dripstone blocks so down into the villager cave to where my emeralds are gone there's always emeralds in the librarian stand which we can use to buy dripstone blocks to add a little more texture in i do want to bring in a little bit of concrete Continuing along with this epic resource gathering journey, I also need some prismarine, endstone, and stone bricks. Now if I can find some cocoa beans somewhere, ah, there we go. We can make some brown stained glass and glass panes. That's the first time I've crafted this. Huh, I'm as surprised as you are. Last few details, I'm gonna want some wither skelly skulls, lightning rods, iron bars, a daylight sensor, and a bunch of other stuff. And this right here is everything I'm going to be needing. Except, well, uh, the copper. Where hopefully all of this is aged down. You know what? I do need the other stages too, so it'll be fine. That right there is all the copper I'm gonna need. And in the meantime, let's grab more raw copper to throw in the super smelter. I love this thing. It's already coming back. Thankfully now this this is everything we need right into the build i want to divide this up into multiple structures where the first here is going to be for loaded carts that are ready to leave to distribute the copper to their final destination work in some mushroom block jungle planks a window right here for something like this and i think the building's going to come up to about here with some composters stretching across i want to run spruce slabs up the side for a roof trim along the back of the build i want it to almost look like garage doors so i want to use some basalt behind archways here for a darker contrast on the entire side inside the factory i want some large entrance archways in here using spruce stairs and trap doors to create the big arch this will give a lot of clearance for moving materials around carrying the composters along the front because it looks nice and then i want to throw in a few oak trap doors here as little windows but then we can run our slabs along the top things are a little flat currently so maybe we bring a few of our spruce trap doors here and fence gates going up well fences this is going to lead into another larger structure across here but before we get into that let's throw the roof on here To finish the back of this warehouse, I wanted to add in some large canisters that would do some cool factory things that I definitely know what the technical term for these are. Moving on to the front here, I want to create a division wall to keep us off of the main street so we can create a bit of a work yard. Doesn't need to just be solid blocks though, so we can add in a few walls on top, fences from there, and trap doors to run the distance. Something like that should work out really well. And we can extend it a little bit on the other side with the entrance in the middle, which leads to the second building in the back where I thought a diorite focus Focus building could be a cool contrast against the mud building we just created. Now behind all these structures, I do want an area for copper forges, which means I need a way to get back there. And if you guessed a large archway, you are, in fact, correct. With something a little like this. We've got three archways to lead out in multiple directions, and I added in a basalt wall back here, where we are going to have a second floor that I think we could bring in some stripped spruce logs and slabs which is looking pretty good now. So I should probably finish off the rest of the walls for the building and going up to the second floor, I'm bringing in sandstone with a little bit of endstone for that like weird aged color look. I actually like it here because I do it everywhere else underneath all of the windows. I wanna add in our flowering azaleas. On the corners though, I wanna bring in a little bit of light blue terracotta for a fun pop of color on the roof. And then taking spruce stairs all the way up to the top. Maybe we add in a little fun sticky outy bit like that and take this all the way down for a roof completely made out of wax copper to bring in a third copper color to the factory now with the tower added in this build is starting to really come together this just leaves one stage of copper left to implement and one more building a big boy over here being the main factory this needs a good way for things to move in and out meaning even more archways Behind this to give it a little bit more depth, let's bring in a bunch of dark oak and just surround the new archways we've created. Small tweak along here, I've been really liking adding in a plank bit just to help break the entire thing up a touch. This build is primarily gonna be made out of dripstone using a little bit of granite as well as bricks to add an extra bit of texture. That'll work for the front, now just the other two sides. I also added in this weird structure here with a doorway to nothing, but 
I kind of like it. But moving on to the second floor now, I'm using a mix of oak and jungle with dark oak supports. Extending out a log here along the front, I want to add in a small lift here so that we can have some sort of way to more easily move things up to the second floor of the factory. But maybe we move this down and add in a scaffolding as like the grabber. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Back on the main street now, as I've left this opening in here, where I want to build an overhang so it's not such a flat wall here on the street. We can throw some scaffolding in for the windows and the rest is just going to be out of white terracotta. With our really leaves. Nailed it, made it professional. And oak trap doors for shutters. That is looking pretty good. Now for the back one. Much better. Which just leaves the roof left to slap on top with our fully oxidized copper, some prismarine bricks, and warp wood to add in the texture, as it is a really big roof. And there it is, the copper factory. We've got a pretty natural back wall here with the mountainside. I blocked off this little section. And now I want to do the same thing over here. Just to have some form of a natural barrier where we can say, you know what, everything inside is what we're working with for the factory buildings and what we need to decorate. Before we start decorating, I do want to change out the floor in here. For that, I want to use rooted dirt and I have two coarse dirt we can make more but I'm gonna need a lot of rooted dirt here off on a new adventure I flew around the world until I could spot an azalea tree wait look at that azalea tree hi I just want the rooted dirt I just just want the dirt please thank you no 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 Right, area is now cleared and it is daytime again. But what's in here? Clocks. But I guess now it's time to just gather up as much of this rooted dirt as I can get. Wait, it doesn't go anywhere. It's supposed to go all the way down to a lush cave. This tree sucks. This tree rules. Just kidding, there's nothing again. What is going on? Where's all my rooted dirt? Oh, it's all the way down here. What the heck? I guess it doesn't like sandstone. With that realization, I set off to gather the rooted dirt that was hidden beneath the desert sands. I almost choked because the spider scared me. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Spider aside, I think we just found an iron vein. Yeah, definitely. Look at that. I hate baby spiders. Oh, that's kind of cool. A minecart and a geode. Oh, just golden apple. Couldn't be that lucky. What is this diamond vein? What was that? That's amazing. All gathered up now and look at all that rooted dirt and check out these diamonds we just found and two spore blossoms. Back over at the factory, I took rooted dirt, coarse dirt, and dirt dirt to change out the entire floor into something more lived on. But for one extra little detail here, I wanna grab the shears and come down and just get some tall grass. I should probably do this at the end, but I mostly just want to right now, so it's fine. I'll probably remove half of this though. Uh, maybe not there. Little over in this corner. This can just kind of show the spaces that people aren't really walking around in. Nope, 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 no, no, grass, no. You don't spread there. Wait, actually, yes, grass, you do spread there. I just remembered I did that on purpose. Next, inside of the factory buildings, I want to add in some stones for the floors to reinforce it further and mixing in a little andesite and stone brick as well. The way this lines up is just so perfect. Wow, it's almost like I planned this beforehand. Look, we now have a way all the way down to the copper aging area. Amazing how that works out. Now for a rare flip thing to do, interiors. Except this stupid grass is growing through my floor. Much better. First up, building some wagons inside of the warehouse. As most importantly, this needs to be a functional place for them to stop and be loaded. One filled up with copper and the other waiting to be loaded, which we can continue this look by running a chain with a hopper all the way back over here using a grindstone coming all the way down to the ground to another one we can create a small little like hoist but maybe down a block yeah it looks like it's dropping it onto the cart now along the back here i want to connect into the surface well ceiling like we have with that guy into some smokers now over here i'm thinking for a small retaining wall so we don't just fall down the staircase you know we can use some trap doors but maybe these we instead put barrels then back at over here i want to add in a small ladder going up to the top where we can install a little loft space with some barrels and we can craft a bed for ourselves well actually the poor unfortunate soul who has to pull an all-nighter ain't gonna be me and that should do it inside of here but back here let's add in 
and some item frames a compass and a clock just so i can know if it's nighttime or not as i'm coming out of the lovely copper aging facility that wow it worked look at that and wow i think i totally forgot something yes we did smelt it down look at that which means it's time for out with the old and in with the new this takes so long to fill up that some are already reaching the third stage so if i go bigger they'll be done aging by the time i'm done placing and it's an infinite loop write that down write that down if we need more copper write that down working backwards in the copper production in process let's move to the backyard here i want to add in giant smelters to show the process of turning raw copper into copper ingots adding a few more storage elements around here as well but what we most importantly need is some stockpiles for all of the copper which something like this should work with a second larger one back here back over by the two forges i want to add in a little covered working area so workers can be out of the rain if they need to for this i'm thinking we just bring in a bunch of slabs and work them over stepping back two blocks at a time leads us to here perfect and that should work out perfectly. A few extra decorations in, added in back here and we can remove all the fire on the campfires because it's not supposed to be on fire until it's well in there. Because I can't help it, right over in here, you guessed it, we're adding in another wagon or a little cart. I don't know, you choose, but it looks pretty good. I also added a little back entrance into this space and we get working on it. As one final decoration option back down at this end, I want to do something a little bit different and build this arm of a reactor type thing connecting into those stacky things that we made. And we are all hooked up. This wall, uh, future foot problem. You know the deal. With the back done, I flew through finishing off the copper receiving area to create a conveyor belt system to take unloaded copper, smash it, and get it ready to go in the forges. Sleepy Flip can't word very well, so I just decided to time lapse the whole thing out, and it's looking really good inside of here. I've got these little micro copper blocks that I wanted to add in because they're just so cute. But here we have the conveyor belt moving everything down this way, gets smashy smashy under the anvils, turned into raw copper up the conveyor belt which then drops into this system to load in right there here in the middle of the yard we have a lot of dead space that really can't be used all that well so i don't want to fill it in too much but i am thinking a few supplies around here oh i don't want to break my grass just to have some stuff around i think something like that should do maybe a little log pile back here now let's grab a little bit more tinted glass and a quick trip to the nether to grab some frog lights where these should do now for the second floor of this building up here it's not going to be super usable so we're just going to turn it into stage dressing so let's add some tinted glass behind all of these and then surround that all with our frog lights I saw B-dubs and Scar do this a little while ago, and it gives a great little brightness behind there, but no light actually comes out of the window. So during the day, it doesn't feel overpowering, but at night, it feels like somebody's almost living in there. As a final step, I'm running around with some glow lichen and glow berries to add the natural vibe to the build that I use everywhere else inside of the city. With that, I'm really happy to say the copper factory is complete inside of this world and actually contains some really cool functional elements, which is fantastic. Taking a little break from the copper factory, I jumped across the canal to the previous industrial district build to spend some time decorating out the back areas of all the buildings, adding in a few additional elements to really just bring it alive. Then I went to the street side to build a fish and ship stand for snacks and a carpenter's workshop in the small space between the buildings, jumping back around behind the houses again though i'm adding in a small backyard for the homes with a beetroot garden and some extra more elements of people actually living here this is looking much much better throughout here but it's time to connect up the two sections of the industrial district i've built so far which means we need some new city buildings right along the road here starting off as always i do need more spruce so we gotta clear out all of these trees next up grabbing a new shulker box and diving into the nether cave as we've got to get out to the mesa to mine a load of terracotta i should only need a tiny beacon to to instant mine the terracotta, right? Yes, perfect. There we go, one full shulker of terracotta. Time to get out of here before all the spooky spawn. I want to experiment a little bit on this build here. So let's craft a ton of purple terracotta, which I think will go really well with some deep slate. So back into the mines we go. Once again in the mines, gathering up cobble deep slate to refill my shulker box. Most of my pickaxes and my wings are nearly broken, so I got to fix that. Nothing a quick trip into the nether can't fix at their wither skeleton farm. 
about an hour later now and this is nearly everything we are gonna need for this build it's gonna be a big boy along with a few more decoration blocks that i need to fully bring these new builds to life and you know really mess up my minecraft inventory Let's focus on this roadside for the build and the purple experiment, where I want to start with some deep slate tile that'll work into our cobbled deep slate and then into the purple terracotta as the main block in the build. This is looking really good over here, but it's very flat. So I'm thinking we bring out here in the front a little archway balcony type thing for a covered walkway, which first is going to start out with stacking up a ton of pillars and then connecting them with our polished deep slate and dark oak trapdoors. You can also hook these all the way back into the building itself. Now, on top of all this deep slate we've already worked inside of here, we can create a seating area as I think this building is going to be intended to be like an inn or a tavern so people can look out over the street. Of course, with a little covered balcony, something can strip dark oak, flowering azaleas for a really cool hedge going right along the edge. Now, on top of all this, I think it'd be a perfect fit to add in even more of our deep slate tiles. To show this is an inn, let's bring a spruce plank out here, item frames on both sides, and have the pillow pointing towards the door. And that is starting to look really good here on the front of the building. Continuing this theme around the back of the building, I extended up the purple walls and added in a lot of dark oak elements to make it a not-so-flat box. Before jumping up to make the roof out of deep slate with a spruce trim, I did leave a gap on one of the corners, though, so I can add in a tower out of mud bricks sticking high into the sky to break up the skyline from the flatter roof we have so far again before moving on into the next building i want to add a small jut out over here i think something out of some stone over here will be a really good way that we can kind of tie everything in and transition into the new building small window right here with a flower pot sitting on a little sill in front this right here should work for all of the stone face and then i want to bring in a little dark oak for the roof it's just gonna stick up as high as we can make it leading into the next attached building right over here i'm trying to really bring the city feel in here with a lot of overlapping buildings tucked in as closely together as they can while they're still feeling a little unique minus this big hole in the back that completes the exterior of the first blob of buildings here on the front to connect this terracotta guy into the next ones i'm thinking we bring in a little bit of brick and develop an archway coming all the way across a bit like that that finishes our two archways across here and then i'm thinking we jut this out for a little bit of spruce and spruce slab action for a floor here in the middle we can continue the beams going across well kind of because i apparently didn't make it even but it's fine we're just gonna ignore that for the going nighttime we can throw in a little lamp to keep things safe creating another terracotta wall on this side over here i want to bring in a little bit of sandstone here for a bit more of a pop going along everything else for something like that and then we do scaffolding and slap in the rest of our windows back size now and as well and from here i want to extend some dark prismarine slabs and just extend this all the way up to the top right now we have a great wall oh, maybe it's better to look at from the outside we now have a lovely walkway across to a building that's probably going to need a lot better of a wall. I think this building is going to be about that wide apart. So I want to bring in a little bit of our orange terracotta here because I got it and I think it's going to be fun. Doorway goes somewhere like this. To go along with the orange, we have the mangrove stairs. And so our door itself isn't sitting on anything. Let's bring in cobble, dark oak door, dark oak door, and trap door. Now for some windows, which might also be considered new entrances since they're out of scaffolding, we can throw those right here. Wall's gonna come up to about there, but on the corners, I thought we could add in some glow like in to kind of be a decorative bit. And being able to see through that's a little awkward, so maybe we do a barrel chest here. And I think I have some, yeah. We'll just throw in some mangrove planks, like that. Now above this section, so it's not just flat, I think we can jut it out from the wall. Probably by two blocks with a little bit of supporting slab down below. Going with our tried and true, we can extend all of our spruce trap doors out from here. Oak planks along the base, working up into our stripped oak logs. Walls are in place, and as always, I want to add in our little flowering azaleas that have turned into almost like the symbol of the city houses. And for the roof of this section, I think we just do some mangrove stairs for the additional pop of color here. Still staying on theme with our warmer colors, but just something new that we don't quite have yet. 
This build is currently a lot of brick and terracotta. So moving to the back over here, I want to try and complement it and do something a little different here with our jungle, which then is going to go into strip jungle logs. And I want to raise the entrance up a bit so it's just slightly off ground level. But over here, I thought it could be kind of cool to add in our chimney as something actually outside of the building. We'll use the composer top for this one. So not everything is smoking and just causing more lag. Blending this back in here with our current roof theme where pretty much everything in this area is at a deep slope currently I want to repeat that over here With that done, I have a big diagonal box in the middle left to fill in, so I wanted to try a new roof shape here before I get so far into the city building project that it's harder to introduce new things. But sometimes it is good to include the old faithful style, so I went back to my starter house build style to fill in the smaller space on the side as there wasn't too much room to do something grand and it fits really well with the older water mill vibe next to it. Five hours later and all of these structures are now in place. But most importantly, now the copper factory is connected to the original industrial district next in the same way we polished up this area over here earlier and it's looking much more finished around the original homes i want to come back here and fix up this big grassy area which is going to require a lot more spruce trap doors and oak trap doors i really like using these for the backyard fences as it's something substantial but it's still pretty small the bigger house can have something like this where we can throw in a little garden now for the purple house i think we do something about right in here and just close it off right next to the staircase now where we have our big shulker mess over here i want to turn this into like a covered work area so if we do something like there three would bring us to here and we go another three we can create something inside of this streaming down the logs we'll get to this in a minute as before i add in too many finer details now that i've got an idea where the structures are i need to figure out what the pathways are gonna look like where i want to come back over here grab a ton of rooted dirt our coarse dirt and regular dirt using spruce slabs we can create the way to walk up between the different layers and tear out a lot of this grass to fill in a ton of coarse dirt or something a little like this and then we've just got to spend some time taking it all the way around That's starting to look much, much better back here. Now I just need to relocate my mess so I can actually work in here. Nope, grass. No, oh, wow. okay, okay, never mind. Sorry, grass. Looks like I can't grow anywhere from there so it can stay. But here in the back, I wanna throw in a little bit of water and create a small herb patch in here where we can have potatoes, carrots, potatoes, carrots. Nope, potatoes. Potato. And then back in this spot, I'm thinking we do pretty much the same thing. Next up, let's grab our beehives, our barrels, soul lanterns, maybe some candles. Back in here, we don't have too much space for a seating area, so this can just be barrels, little beehive and another one for storage but over here i made this little mud brick area so i was thinking we could have a little seating and some candles on top that's looking pretty good in here now for these pillars that i stacked up earlier i'm thinking we simply just add on spruce planks going all the way around okay here in the middle is a little flat so let's get some stairs we're hopefully yes i can do this we can give the illusion of the slab being in the middle by doing back-to-back -back stairs nobody will ever know it's perfect there we go. That's looking much better now just to decorate the inside. And much better. Not too sure what it does, but it's a little workstation. Next up, I want to plant a glow berry, and I need a lot more of them. As we definitely need a little bit more greenery around here inside this city, it's everywhere. So I don't want to forget it here. I've got a few hanging roots left we can throw in too, but I got to be pretty sparing with them. All of the little stuff is in around here, but I want to include some trees like this one inching up the side of the wall here with some acacia leaves on it. Something like that should work. I've recently been inspired to come up with some new tree designs and created this weird jungle tree a while back, and I'm so happy to finally have an excuse to bring it into the world. Now, it is a little tall, but if we fly all the way back here, it pops above the roof line just ever so slightly, and I love that. Just look at it. Oh, it's so good. Also, I wish we could use vines on the wall and shear them like glowberries. I mean, look how much string I had to put back here just to stop this thing from hopefully growing. Also, vines with little flowers on them like we have in the flowering azalea bush. If that's not too much to ask for, that'd be really cool to have, thanks. But there we go. A full copper factory ready to oxidize all of my copper moving forwards and a brand new new expansion to the city. I've now survived over 3,600 days in this hardcore world, so be sure to leave a like, please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch y'all on the uh, flip side.